Hello, Colleen. Hello, Shay. How are you? I'm so happy to see you virtually. Same. Yeah. <laughs> and our Glam Hive community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, this is, I'm really excited. Yay. Yeah, so before we start our presentation, why don't you tell uh, our viewers a little bit about yourself? Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Colleen Renee, uh, makeup artist. Uh, it, well, I'm in my studio here in Nashville. Uh, quickly, I uh, got my start years ago, uh, started off as a model, and then eventually became a makeup artist, mentored under the legendary Dick Page, uh, was able to work on some of the biggest shows around the world. Uh, it was, you know, like a dream come true. I got, it was for me being a fine artist, it was like being able to mentor under a Michelangelo is what I called as an apprentice. Um, from that, I was with him for four and a half years and then I branched out on my own. And, uh, since then I've been very, I mean, I've had such a wonderful, I always say I've been very blessed as far as the work I've been able to do and continue to get to do. Um, I've been able to incorporate my fine art background into my work and have worked with some of the most incredible people, both in fashion, like the legends. I remember having to pinch myself sometimes um, with where I was and who I was on set with. And now I'm, uh, before COVID, I was commuting. I was in New York for a lot, in LA, in Nashville, working celebrity, doing fashion, doing a lot of beauty, working with a lot of the beauty brands, uh, going to launches and, uh, you know, loving my job. So now I'm here and I'm just working from home and I'm just thrilled and love, you know, doing a lot of lives and, um, you know, doing things like this, which we keep the community encouraged and going. So yeah, that's it. That's right. And I love being part of this beautiful sisterhood of yeah. the stylists in Glam Hive. I think we all lift each other up and we're all able to collaborate in a beautiful way like we did, Colleen. And it's not just because we're fierce redheads either. I think it's because we're, we're spirits as well, sister spirits. Um, but I'm Shay Strager and uh, I started off doing fashion in the late 90s styling. Um, I started in the jewelry realm, so start, starting jewelry for runway shows during fashion week. Um, and I did that for three years before I started working with more and more fashion designers for their celebrity looks for the Oscars and the Emmys and uh, in addition to their uh, twice annual uh, fashion week shows. And then I started, thanks to Paulita Washington, Denzel Washington's wife, started doing uh, a little bit more celebrity. And after working with her, I started working with Marsha Gay Harden and a few singing groups, including the Three Graces, which are the female equivalent of Paul Devo. Uh, awesome. And I did that for a long time. You know, I started working in New York City in, in the late 90s and, and, and until 2012, that's actually what I did full time. And then my family decided to make a move to Atlanta and I started working with more, uh, corporate individuals, CEOs, C-suites, executives, brands, um, a red corporate dress code for a large automotive company that you would know. Uh, and so now I'm par primarily dealing with individuals and corporate staffs, and I really love making that change. And very much like you, Colleen, I'm still in New York one week out of the month, or I hope to return to doing that as soon as our travel bans are lifted. Yeah, I was in New York for most, I mean, I call New York home. So, you know, I just moved back to Nashville because, you know, it's it's got it's such a huge Community. You've got Nicole Kidman, Reese Witherspoon, um, Cheryl Crow. Uh, gosh, all the supermodels are here. Karen Nelson, uh, Josephine Skirver, uh, Lily Eldred. They're all here. They're That's all right. here. Yep. We're really lucky to be in two cities outside yeah. of New York that are, that, yeah. are, that are flourishing, I think. You know, and hey, let's talk about what we're, we came here to talk about today. Okay, yes. let me share my screen so we can talk. Uh, Colleen and I collaborated on bringing to you today uh, professional styling in the age of Zoom. Because now, let's face it, we're gonna be doing it for a long time, guys. Uh, you know, I have a lot of my corporate folks that aren't gonna to return to the office until fall of next year. So it's really important to look your best. And the way Colleen and I are gonna present it to you, we're gonna use some slides today. Okay, so here we are. Professional style in the age of Zoom. I think why it's so important that we want to talk about this today is because truly 87, like 80 to 90% of the information that we're receiving is visual and it's nonverbal. So we're making all those cliches come true. Seeing is believing, right, Colleen? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's basically meeting in person. You're, you're just not going to an office. That's right. That's right. And how we present ourselves on screen, this is an opportunity for us to present our best true selves in this environment, which has parameters that we can control. 
and why we wanted to show this image, number one, Colleen styled this beautiful, she did all the makeup for this shoot, and I'll let her tell you about that in a second. But for me, I look at this, and I think not only is this a beautifully styled picture, but these are four women of various ages and ethnicities that have different face shapes, but then they're, they're beautifully put together, different necklines, and they're, do, they're putting their best face forward. Colleen, tell us about the shoot. Well, it's, it's my favorite client. It's Zero Maria Cornejo, um, who's an extraordinary um, designer, you know, accolades for her, uh, for pro-women, like uh, for women's rights and Syria and everything. So what she, her shoots are always about one model and then real women. So one is an activist, one is a, um, a makeup, uh, not makeup artist, an artist, artist, and then another one's an actress. So what's wonderful about her shoots is each woman has her own individuality. Um, Maria tends to, when she dictates, uh, you know, not dictates, but uh, gives guidance for makeup, tends to like it to be very minimal, um, just enhancing their natural beauty. And if someone wanted a little more, that's what we gave them. So that's the whole uh, design behind this shoot was that this was her spring summer 20 collection, I believe. And um, it was just about putting different women together. And it's beautiful. And just bringing out their, their natural beauty. Um, the woman in the coral wanted a coral lip because that's her signature. So we gave her a, you know, a coral lip. So great. I love this. I love this shoot. And so, and we'll talk more about those uh, individual th way, ways you can help bring out your best attributes in our next section. But broad strokes, here is what we're going to talk about today. Um, investing time in your prep is really important because this is a platform that we know the parameters of. We know we're going to fill this computer screen or your cell phone screen when you're doing these calls. I think it's really important to style your surroundings and then put your best face forward. And Colleen's gonna speak to how to accentuate your features with makeup. And I'll bring in some tips on how to pick an ensemble that best flatters your face shape and create symmetry and balance with your look. And lastly, we're gonna to talk to, to you about using color as uh, to your advantage. It's a power tool for me, isn't it for you, Colleen? <laughs> I mean, it's so genius. I know, I mean, I'm always in black. I mean, that's a sad, Part. I mean, we always wear black. That's set you know, life, working. girl. <laughs> <laughs> but that's up to, to change now with Zoom, right? <laughs> yes. So talking about styling your surrounding, guys, I think we're showing this first slide as an example of what not to do. Uh, one of the most important things about styling your surroundings is keeping you as the focal point. You are the expert. You, everyone has a goal when we go on these calls. We're all sharing information and knowledge. So to keep you as the center point, we need to create space within your backdrop where you remain the focal point. Colleen, what does this picture tell, about, tell you? What does this say? It's a lot going on, yeah. Like, you know, because for me, as an artist, I immediately want to look at what kind of books that person has, right? I Because I'm obsessed with art books and be like, oh, what kind of books are those? You know, what, you know, you want to see the person per se, because you're going to be more focused about what's on the background. That's right. Yeah. And I, can, I mean, obviously, we can tell she's well, whoever this person is, is well read and has various hobbies and, you know, like sports and has kids. But to me, I think there's a way that we can do this better. And Absolutely. here's one that... Yeah, here's, here's the home that I found that this is someone who knows how to use color and art to their advantage. And Colleen, talk to me about how we, how we would style someone who was sitting in this backdrop. Well, because like we were saying, like that person, since there's so much um, color, it would be a more neutral based styling wardrobe. But then obviously this person loves red and loves color. And that's where you can bring in the lip. Like the, for me, for makeup, it would be very beautiful, natural, glowy skin, little cheek, a little, and we always want to define our eyes because that is the window of our soul. And, and especially when you're on Zoom calls, you, you know, it's eye contact. So it would be a nice brow, a little, you know, what I'd like to say, weight around the eye and then pick up maybe one of the great colors that this person has, not green, but the red or uh, one of my favorite um matte pink lips is um from nars called shop and it's just this really great um neutral hot pink but it's uh, a little more on the warm side it works with every woman and it just flatters you know or a red a matte red or a sheer if they don't want something that bold i would do one of those um semi sheer lippy that just gives weight to the lip but doesn't overpower 
Yeah, and for me, the clothing here, I would keep the person who's speaking in black or white or in a, in a neutral that isn't part of the backdrop because we want the color around to let it to have its moment. And I think with that type of makeup that Colleen just suggested, this would be beautiful. And this next slide, so this is, this is where I wanna do therapy, okay? This is where I just wanna sit on this couch and talk about my problems. I really don't have any problems right now. Let's be, let's be real, I'm so thankful. I love leather couches. I have a lot of problems. But <laughs> if I did, if I could dream some up, I would sit here and talk about them. Uh, and, and this just makes me feel, this is comfortable. This is comfortable yeah. for my eyes. Colleen, what would, how, how could we uh, do face here for our subject? Well, what the great thing is because of the neutrality of everything, um, you know, it would be, I would, Base it on how you would style her, right? Would you choose? And then from there, her hair, you know, what she likes. A lot of times as a makeup artist, makeup is very personal. So people do have, women in particular, they're comfortable in a, in a specific look. So my job is to, to take that information and, you know, make a suggestion and do my twist and make a better version of it. So it could be doing, you know, a bronze eye or once again, this is because of the neutrality of it, you, you have more playing room. So I would rely more on you for this as far as how you're going to dress her and then take it from there, like how she's doing her hair and then um, what, what she's wearing. Yeah, and because of all the plants in the background, which I, I love this, I call it the Peloton plants effect, because if anyone's working out with Peloton, Peloton like I am, you know that in all their at-home sessions, there were Peloton plants that reminded you to breathe. <laughs> we're human beings, we need air, we have to breathe. Um, so for me, I would put, so I would use the colors in the backdrop really to make a powerful focal point for the person who's speaking. And I would put them in camel, I would put them in ivory or black or green, a solid color. So it brings in some of the colors behind them and then I think just like you said Colleen there's a great way to use a little color on their face because we're keeping it so natural to suit their mm -hmm. environment like the hair should be very natural away from the face but very natural and I think that's a great way to do the makeup too to add the color there in the little Absolutely. sheet yeah and then this is one of my favorite images because it reminds me of almost any of my C-suite individuals in New York City apartments. Uh, it does, they all have amazing views and they all understand the power of minimal minimalism because I think that in their jobs, they're so detail oriented and they're always dealing with a lot of details. That Their homes I find to be very simplistic, beautiful art, beautiful backdrops. They wanna bring the outside in. And I think here, the, the ability to, I mean, really, you could be wearing anything, but what I would avoid wearing in a, in a, in if you were sitting on this couch or sitting sideways on that chair is prints. So this, I would just keep as solids and keep it very neutral. Colleen? Well, like I was saying, this reminds me of a Phoebe Philo Celine kind of environment, you know. Um, I used to do her uh, presentations. Um, Dick would do the big shows in Paris, but then they would come to New York um, for the pre-fall and resort, which I would was so honored to be able to do it. So when I see this, once again, I think of that, like, you know, very minimal, very chic, modern makeup. Um, you know, I'm always for women in particular, um, it's about skin first. And once your skin looks great, everything else kind of falls into place. It's like just sewing a canvas. So for something like this, I would, depending once again on your color choice on what you would put on um, the, particular person, that's where I would either do maybe a, a very soft eye with a curl of a lash. Once again, we all women need to have liner, especially um, with the Zoom calls. I think that was another thing where um, when you do your makeup in your mirror, it's going to read differently than on camera. So mm -hmm. you would always want to, when I would do it, I would like, you know, when I show like, let's look at it over the camera, which is the advantage of doing things virtually now, because you can see it right off the bat. Whereas when you do it on the person in the chair and they get in front of the camera, it's a different thing. That's why they always say, let's get the makeup done and let's go on set and see how it looks in camera. That's right, that's right. And you know, in my office, so I'm speaking to you today for my styling studio, but in my office upstairs, I have three bookshelves and I've styled them very differently so that I can turn my chair around in my office and almost have a 360. Because I'm on Zoom calls very much like a lot of you all day long now. <laughs> I, that Zoom fatigue is a real thing, guys. So I do like to change my background each time. Like every couple hours, I'll stand up, move my chair, move my lights. I use an O-ring um, and I'll just move in front of one of these. You know, it's important. I wanted to have professional markers. I wanted to make sure you could see things around me, knew I had New York experience. No, I love, you know, Dior and fashion and uh, one of a kind artists. 
uh, I feel very blessed to have worked with some of the best of the best, just like you, Colleen. And speaking yeah. of that, here we are. Here we are in your office, in your workspace. My office. I, I thought I took here. a really good picture of that, by the way. I mean, I tell you, I was like, that looks really cool. <laughs> I love the 11 Pro. Yeah, this is my office. I know, I hope it's like, it, it's a little cluttered, but it's also, I, I love it because it's my illustrations. It's my, some of the work I've done. And then also the mood boards that I, I did years ago for different projects that are iconic images because we don't have magazines like we used to so a lot of these are like Vogue Italia and French Vogue from years ago archives and it's Paolo Reversi and Mizell and Michael Thompson and I just love looking at that because that's a part of our industry for me as a creative that's kind of gone away so I just love being around magazines and art so it, it inspires me. Well, and it also shows your expertise, and I think that's a big part. Having professional markers in the back of your screen so that you know who you're speaking to and it enforces it in these Zoom calls is super important. Yeah. And speaking all eyes on Drew, let's talk about face shape. Let's talk about how important it is to have, to, you know, to, to use makeup as a tool in accentuating your features and to put your best face forward. Yeah, I did this shoot with Drew, um, gosh, over a year ago. This was for... She has a, a magazine for her Flower Beauty called Flower Beauty Press. We had met when I was, I keyed the shows for Club Monaco for two seasons and she, Flower Beauty sponsored me and my, for, you know, for the team for the makeup. Um, so we worked on this particular shoot. Um, Mark Silliger shot it, which was amazing. And this was for her, her um, eyewear. But once again, you know, just going back to face shape, but it's also what the person's comfortable with. She's got a signature red lip. So we did that. I did, you know, pop of the cheek and we dropped some lashes in and just a little smoke from some, uh, one of the flower beauty. I think we did Austin City. It was like she had these new uh, palettes out and, you know, highlight because everybody, once again, face shape, it's not one size fits all. So you look at the hair because, you know, her hair was this way. If you had fringe, it would be different. And then, um, of course, with uh, glasses, we were talking, I have my glasses on because I can't see. Um, you know, that's another way where you can do a lip if you have an oval face rather than emphasizing the eyes. Does and I that think make that sense? It, I it does. And, and I think why it's, why it's so important for us to share this with folks at home is that our mind reads visual images and it trusts them if there's symmetry and balance. And so yes. that's why we're using all these tools so that we can create balance in our presentation. So Absolutely. that we're creating that trust with who we're speaking to. Uh, and this is, can we talk about your face charts? Because they are phenomenal. This Thank is one you. that you did. I, yes, I did this one for, uh, for Drew. Actually, I have the finished one up on my wall behind me. I just did a whole series uh, just for her after we did this shoot. And um, just as a recap, I sent them to them. I said, oh, here are the looks that we did. And of course, I showed you this one. Here's you. Can, Can you see, you see me at home, guys? That's me. I, I love this. So uh, this is how I do face charts and why I did you in this way. It was like, this is the, the natural side. And I did a more sultry um, Zoom call eye. Because, you know, once again, we don't need to be afraid of a little more uh, pop or oomph because once again the camera sees things differently so sometimes what happens is in the mirror we'll see oh my cheek looks really strong but when you get in front of your ring light it 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 blasts you out so you have to understand the level so it's one of my favorite eye palettes from Lancome it's called uh, French French nude so it's great and then okay, what I do for when women this, of when this color, call is over I want folks at home to know oh my gosh okay talk about that in one second but I have, this you is have my to friend Joy but she's another amazing makeup artist, but um, I just, for women of color, and there's the ones behind me, I like to use this paper called Tone Tan. I, it's a gap that I think the makeup industry brands need to fill because they always put women of color on white paper and they don't need to do that. They can't afford this. So for me as a makeup artist, whenever I work uh, or have a shoot um, or a client, I use the Tone Tan because it's just more respectful because it, it covers all spectrums from Latinas all the way to, you know, African American. So that's a beautiful that's, point. Yeah. So that's I what I do. I think I said changing. it. It's just a way to um, show where I want to go or after we do a session, I do a recap and it's written down and it's just nice to have. 
So folks at home, when you hire Colleen on Glamhive, you get to get your own face chart. It's pretty amazing. I want you to do it. Uh, the basic face shapes we're gonna talk about today are, we, we're gonna talk about heart, oval, rectangle, and square. And in yes, diamond is out there, but we, we're gonna really show it more as, as oval because I think we're gonna cover some things in heart, don't you think, Colleen? Yes. Yeah, and you can really, um, and let's talk here, round is the first face shape. And let's talk about what, if you have a round face, how to create symmetry and balance here. Colleen, I'll let you go first. Well, once again, with makeup, with a round face, it, it, you, you look at the individual, like what their features are, because you, you want to soften, you know, with the round, you can give a little more chiseling. Like I said, what, I, I don't like using the word contour. I like to use soft sculpting. It's also playing up the highlight so that it brings the face up and doesn't look as as round but it's such a beautiful because what's great about round faces is they have these amazing cheekbones you know they can smile and and it's also the the eye shape and the hair you know that to me is a big factor because if they have fringe then there's certain areas that I would focus on maybe it's the eye you know and if it's more open then you, you do a balance everything out so that you have this kind of nice symmetry but at the same time, you, you take a little less off, just give it a little more, um, what do I say, um, sculpting. I hate to use the Okay, and I think that in the overall school uh, rule with styling here is that whatever your face shape is, you want to you wanna create a different shape with your collar and neckline. So what you're wearing should not be the exact same echoing shape. Like for instance, if you have a round face shape, my collar today is round. I have an oval face shape and, I wear, and, I, and I'm actually using jewelry, you know, as to create different eye lines and layers too. So that's the major rule. So with anyone with a round face shape, I'd say, you know, really V-necks, asymmetrical necklines, square necklines, deep Vs are fabulous because they're gonna help you create that balance and symmetry. And who's this lovely lady, Colleen? This is uh, the actress Sophia Bush. Uh, this was a shoot we did for Glamour magazine. Um, it was it was actually about perfect timing. It was about you know summer beauty and uh, different hair. Uh, DJ Quintero did the hair. Uh, yeah, I mean she loves really glowy skin, and that's what this what this is. But once again, no, it's the hair shape also. So. You know, however the hairstylist does the hair, that's another way that a makeup artist, is, for me, would um, design the makeup. Because if that person has a really strong bob, then that would might change up the, you know, the level of what I'm going to do. If it's going to focus on the eye or do the lip. And so, if we haven't said this already at home, this Sophia has um, a heart-shaped face. So, and, and what they've done here with the jewelry, with the makeup with her hair, they've made it so symmetrical and beautiful that you really don't notice that point in her chin, which most heart shapes, it's most recognizable. I mean, you know, other people that have a heart-shaped face that you would recognize, uh, Reese Witherspoon, Kerry Washington, you know, they, your chin becomes almost the, the point in the face. And this is just so beautifully done. This was such a great job for heart-shaped face. And here, get back to the Peloton crew, Allie yeah. Love, yeah. So these ladies have square or rectangle shaped faces. And Colleen, talk about this. Well, this is, an, this is a great compare and contrast because we, the one on the, oh, I'm doing like on the right, um, it was, dictated for, I hate saying dictated, I'm sorry, um, where, the, where the design wanted a, um, a softer, uh, more natural, pretty, glowy skin. Once again, it's the hair with the hair on one side. And um, so I, what I would do is I did a little soft sculpting and then the brow. I mean, because with an, with an Asian eye, what's so great is you can really play up the eyes. They've got beautiful brows drop in a little more um, liner on the top. And then I always, for me, it's about cheek a lot, you know, because if you balance, when you have a great cheek and highlight, it really balances out the face. Yeah, and for, you know, and I, I love doing a big ha big hair. I love big hair, I'm all about big hair. Uh, but also a great way for a square shape face or rectangle is to have that deep side part. I think that works beautiful too. And for the necklines, again, anything but square or rectangle, you know, V, off the shoulder, asymmetrical. And you know, and at work, especially uh, when you're on these calls and if you're a professional and you work in banking or finance or anything, use layers, use jewelry, create different eye lines. You know, you can use your accessories as well. 
Well, like I was saying, you know, everybody has it, you know, eye, its eye shape. And then also, I want to note before I forget, um, putting makeup on your neckline as well is really important too, because a lot of so we, we, a lot of women tend to stop right here, especially with Zoom. And it's like being, in, you know, when you're in the camera, you need to bring the makeup down, which goes into Leanne on it's my left. Um, it sh I always brought makeup down to her neckline. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important in Zoom calls, especially because remember, we're speaking. And this is the type, the only communication platform that a lot of us have where we're speaking to each other, where we can actually see our mouths move <laughs> and our necks, because everywhere we go in person, we're masked. You know, you know, if I, if I do go out, I did do a closet yesterday, and I was in that closet for five and a half hours. And I have to say, I had gloves and a mask on the entire time. And I really, on the way home, I prayed for every person that has to wear a mask more than 10 hours a day because you're dehydrated. You're exhausted from breathing in your own air for that long. I mean, it just, oh, it just broke my heart. So especially in Zoom or, you know, WebEx or whatever platform you're using, you know, it is important to, you know, do, do the whole thing. You know, whatever people see in the screen is what you want to, you really want to work with and sculpt and mold to your advantage. And let's talk well, about Oval now, Colleen. Oval, well, like Leanne, I've been working off on, with Leanne for a very long time. This was for her album, last album cover shoot. And that, once again, because she has a very high forehead, once again, this goes back to hair, how hairstyling, you do the sculpting to bring the forehead down, you know, and then underneath the, you know, the jawline a little softer I bring in a little you know uh, I love to use a, a bronzer from NARS because it's matte um, and then of course her signature is her eyes it always has been and I love working on her eyes it's a good smoky eye and um, highlighter and then uh, Lion Babe uh, you know she's got this amazing no pun in, I mean that's what she's not lying I mean she you know she's Vanessa Williams daughter yeah and um, I want that she hair. wanted yeah, and with her, it was about the eyes because she wanted something a little more um, bold. So we went with, gold, you know, beige glitter. But it's still, to me, it's all about, with all face shapes, it's about skin. And once you have beautiful skin, then you bring in those elements. Um, it's like with I paint, right? You, yes. you bring in all these little elements of sculpting, maybe a little bit of down the nose. It doesn't have to be that youtube -y. And it, women don't need to be afraid of it and that's why I like to show because even on myself I do some of it but I do it in a way where it enhances the natural face shape rather than you know detracts from it absolutely and so hopefully we've covered you know face shape in one of those uh, categories that speaks to you at home and if you if we didn't then you have to chat us up you know you can direct message either Colleen and I uh, via the glam high platform and we'd be happy to answer any questions you have but the last thing we want to talk about is using color therapy um, and I have it here as a calming tool but you know I use color as my advantage all the time it's my one-two punch as a fashion stylist it really is and you can look at my Instagram and see that you know I'm always talking to my clients I use Instagram and Facebook and Twitter as my main communication vehicle with my clients I'm always talking to them always and you know with with how I look in my pictures I'm letting them know I understand what it's like to need to present a certain image at work and you know and for years Colleen we've talked about this using color and being able to use it to your advantage there's a lot of power in that it's incredible right I never thought of that because like I said my world everybody on sets in black all the time so you don't even even when I've thrown color on you know I wear I have a lot of green um, it just seems you kind of go oh wow colors actually a little nice right in, in green specifically, especially like this swatch from Pantone, um, you know, green is one of the, the most calming colors we have. It reminds us of nature. It reminds us to breathe. It reminds that we are human beings, that we need oxygen. We have to live to breathe. And so, you know, green is a great color and always using green to your advantage is good. And the warmer colors, like the reds and yellows and oranges, those are active colors and they give you active feelings. So you can really use those colors to evoke emotion. You know, yellow is like the happiness color. Every shade, I'm always feeling happy when there's someone wearing yellow. And, and, and especially red, my gosh, you can have such, like it symbolizes financial independence, a strong personality and strength. And uh, orange, love fun that. and for vibrance, yeah. 
And then blue, it's so funny, you know, Colleen, we, we know being in the industry, Pantone chooses, chooses their color of the year 18 months prior, basically, right? Like yes. last spring, they decided yes. that this classic blue was going to be the color for this year. And it's funny because, man, they nailed it. I mean, never before have we needed a color that, right. that basically evoked the emotions of calm and connectedness and connection. Oh, my gosh. Confidence. This is what we need, guys. This is an uncomfortable time. The, the political yeah. climate is uncomfortable. And, and you know, I've been noticing that I've wear, worn a ton of blue lately. You know, have you, Colleen, did you notice at all? Have you wear, been wearing certain colors? You, you know, I mean, like I said, I got, actually, the funny thing is I do have several blue um, pieces that I, you, I would wear when I was on set, like a really, from uh, JP Organic. I, they used to, were a client of mine and I had so much of their stuff and it was this kind of really, I call it like a Copenhagen blue, like a really a beautiful, um, not navy, but um, you know, it's, it's kind of almost got a little grayish yellow undertones as well to it. I used to be a textile designer before I was a makeup artist, so. <laughs> so you get this. This is a, this is all yeah. repetitive material yeah. for you. <laughs> not at all, because yeah. I remember trend going to Trend Union. I don't know, and remember they would just dictate. You know, was it like a year and a half out that would give you all yeah. these great swatches? So yeah. And I'm going to stop my screen share right here because, um, you know, I think the, the, the note we're going to leave with everybody today is the fact that all of these things that we've discussed can help you present your best self in video communications. Style your surroundings. Use makeup as a tool to give your best face forward, present your best face forward. Use your clothing to create confidence and symmetry and balance in your looks so that you can create that visual trust with your audience. And last but not least, you could use color to your advantage. And, you know, Colleen, we didn't really talk about lighting, but both you and I know how important that is and to be well lit. And, you know, I wish you could see the lighting that's going on in my styling studio today. I am so lit electrically. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's what we were saying. Room. That's it. But, um, you know, if, if you're doing it and always when you do your makeup, put your iPhone selfie camera on and look at your makeup because as I said even as a makeup artist I can think my makeup looks really well blended and but the camera now with the HD and all the different um, lenses that they have now it really picks up everything so go in front and just look at yourself first and get your lighting I mean the sim a simple ring light works and and that's really the main main key to kind of get through it and I always like to say let your personality shine through because you know you can take five minutes for your makeup you know as i said that's like the donna karen five easy pieces right you got your mascara you skin number one skin 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 if your skin looks great you can do a quick you know tinted moisturizer um curl your lashes throw some mascara on do a little smudgy liner cheek and uh lippy and you're good to go maybe and always a little highlight and powder just in your tea right here and here but keep this glowing. Wow. Colleen, you're a star. You're such an expert. I love talking with you. I've loved working with you on this project yeah. with Glam Hive. And lady, I want to take our show on the road. I mean, I all you love folks that. can watch this on Glam Hive and uh, you can share it with your friends, but we just wanted you to know how much we appreciate, number one, the support of Glam Hive, this amazing community. And Colleen, I truly appreciate you. So oh, thanks again. Same for here. I just could talk to you all day long. <laughs> Agree. Well, thank you again, Glam Hive. We'll see thank you, guys you Glam Hive. Hive. This was so much fun.